we assembled over 225,000 data points um, for water quality, uh, for chlorophyll, for nutrient concentrations, for lake characteristics. Uh, we then combined it with climate, uh, with land use variables. And so we've provided one of the first comprehensive databases of water quality for freshwater lakes for almost 12,000 lakes, representing more than half of the world's freshwater supply. It's free and online. So anyone, even like an amateur, I'm just interested in what the water is in my area person can go online and find this. The majority of our data set is and, and mostly in the U.S., but we do have representation everywhere, including Antarctica, which is fantastic. We also have quite a large time range. We have studies that go all the way back from the early 50s. So not only can we say uh, evaluate chlorophyll patterns that have occurred in and around the world, but we can also evaluate chlorophyll patterns that have happened over the last decades and see how that's changed with things such as climate change, with more um, urban land use, or anything else that could be driving these patterns. So when we, if we were to lose the chlorophyll, it could have um, cascading effects into that are negative to the entire ecosystem. Or positive in other ways, because sometimes that things are not necessarily good. The only other thing I might add is that although the focus was chlorophyll, we did actually, we extracted a lot of other water chemistry information as well. Um, so the amount of phosphorus, the amount of nitrogen, and these are important because they help us predict for chlorophyll, but they could also be indicators of other things associated with ecosystem health. It does comprise less than 1% of, uh, of water on earth, but fresh water is the, the water that humans rely on every day to survive. We hope that this will spark lots of new interesting research uh, on, on understanding the drivers of water quality.